we enjoy, we always enjoy homecoming. Um, it's not like we didn't preach. We preached three times last week, but it, uh, it's always, wherever, wherever we're at uh, in ministering, I'm always, my mind's always here. I can see uh, the pulpit. I can see the pe you people. And uh, it's always good to get back, as much as it is good to sometimes get away and enjoy. I just got back last night from a quick trip to Missouri uh, for a... Why are we wobbly? Yeah, I'm not going to be wobbly anymore. Um, the uh, COL, the Choice of Light, uh, Jerry Savelle was at uh, Keith Moore's Church in Branson. I went down. Uh, took the long trip to Branson, went to Poplar Bluff, Missouri first, and then across because I was high to meet the rest of the people from Kentucky. Um, but it was a really good weekend. We're headed back today. <laughs> so I, I, as I was traveling back from Missouri yesterday, I was saying, well, I got to be on this road tomorrow afternoon. So we're, we're headed back today to take the those three children, those youngsters. It's hard to believe that Leah is in high school this year. High school. So, anyway, love you guys. Um, I don't really. I, I have I have a sermon, but it's not really a sermon. I don't turn into me Ephesians chapter two. Um, I started working. I always I, I I always have a direction. As soon as I'm done on Sunday morning, I have a direction for the following week, and then God changes changes things up on me and. I wrote a lot of this message uh, on the trip home yesterday um, and uh, then last night. And then this morning, God woke me up at 5 o'clock. He must not have known I have to drive today. So <laughs> but uh, he woke me up to, to really bring some conclusion to this. I hope it's some conclusion. But I said, I'm not really here to preach this morning. I really want to have a conversation somewhat uh, about yesterday, today, and tomorrow in our lives. Our yesterdays, our todays, and our tomorrows. Um, if you haven't noticed, we have a new building, right? New property. But this is not the end run. And what, what um, you know, I believe that we need to keep in our mind is this is just the beginning. Most all of us in this room today, with the exception of Dustin and a couple of others, um, we've been walking with God for a long time. And uh, this is a new beginning. This is, this is the beginning. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, it says this, And now God has us where he wants us. He prepared this place for us. I'm reading out of the message. I'm not sure what they've got up there. But I mean, it says uh, that the ages to come, um, he sh that he might show exceeding riches to his grace and kindness. I'm reading out the message. Message translation says, this, Now God has us where he wants us with all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. And it's understanding that God had a plan for this place from the beginning of time. We've said that again. I'm saying it again. Why? To remind us that this is brand new. We as a church, uh, Grace Fellowship, part of the church, we most of us have been to Pastor Rick and Vince and Dina and Danny. We've been together 18 years. But this is the beginning. This is where we start at. It's not, we don't sit back and relax now. We, he has us right where he wants us to move forward in central Illinois. The vision that, uh, or the word that was spoke over us by uh, Pastor Nancy was, uh, she gave us a map. She said, there's a map. And we'll, 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 we'll explain this a bit more later. Uh, but it was, she said, it was like your foot, you put your, where you're at. She said, the ball of your foot is in, in Groveland. And then put your, plant your foot down. She says, that's how much you're going to exp expand, how much it's going to change central Illinois. God's made us, to, brought us here. When we, when we founded this church eight, 19 years ago, we named it Grace Fellowship Central Illinois. For a couple of reasons. One, we, I knew we weren't staying in Metamora very long. I knew that is inside of me. But I also wanted to touch the. I wanted to touch Illinois. There was at one point with uh, at one of the word rallies, what homecoming used to be called, went up to have a prayer for from Pastor Philip, and I went up and I said, I want 
a thousand churches. I'm claiming a thousand churches in Illinois, Grace Fellowship churches. Well, how does that happen? Well, first off, we build an infrastructure. Infrastructure. That's it's like why everybody in this building almost is a pastor. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that because you have to build a foundation to build the building. We have to build a foundation to build a ministry. And, 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 and so we look at where we're at and we look at what God's got planned for us and we know that this is just the beginning. There's a whole lot of ministry in this room. You know, most everybody in this room, ha you have a call on your life. You have a call on your life. And every one of us in this room, he's, God's now in this, again, going back to that verse, says, now God has us where he wants us. Um, so what do we do next? If this is the beginning, what do we do next? It's, it, it, it's, it's not meant for us to stop. I mean, the, think of the enthusiasm March 3rd. I mean, from the loss of the apostle that morning to that evening when I spoke to Gail, and it just kicked off then. And think of the enthusiasm. Think we ran hard for a season. But that was just the, that was just the practice. That was to set us up for the race. That's to put us in a position. If, and, you know, um, m most of us are familiar, most of you are familiar with the vision God gave me 34 years ago. That wasn't just a vision for that time. It's for now. We've taught vision, we've taught destiny in this building, or not this building, in this body for years, for 19 years. Spent a lot of time talking about vision. Spent a lot of time talking about the, the destiny. We taught, a, we taught a college class on destiny. And so there's a thing is, is that, is that we, we, we have right now the opportunity to excel because of the giftedness here. Vision and destiny aren't accomplished. Uh, what does it would take to accomplish them? It, they just don't happen. It takes cooperating with God and, and, and hearing what he's telling us as, a, as an individual, but as a body. It takes us cooperating with one another and, and saying, okay, um, I'm just going to pull stuff out here. Says like, off the top of my head, the event center. Well, what is the event center? Well, we got the structure for it. And I hear things coming to me. I'm going, those are the exact same things that I've been believing for, for, for since 34 years. It's now, it's time, it's our purpose, it's our destiny here. It also takes cooperating with the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit direct us and hearing what he's saying, listening to his voice. You know his voice, listening to him, he says, do this, do that. And, it, and a lot of times we think, well, I, uh, I don't want to say this. A lot of times God speaks to you, then you're the one that needs to do it. That, that's how to put, that's the best way to put it. Because if you speak, it doesn't mean you have to do it by yourself. You bring somebody alongside of you to do that with you. But when God tells you to, to about backed up too far there, didn't I? The, the God tells you to do something, well, just do it. And, and somebody else will come alongside of you to do it with you. You know, cooperating with, Holy, Holy, with God is, is out of Ephesians also. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to read out the Amplified, so it's a little bit different than what they're going to put up on the board, unless they've got the Amplified. We need to get all these versions in our computer. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says this, And you he made alive. Say, he made me alive. He made me alive. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he make us alive? He says, when you were dead in sin and your, trust, and your trespasses and your sins, in which at one time you walked habitually. Think about your past a minute. I'm going to talk about your past. Think about your past. All of us have one, maybe with the exception of two people in this room that I know of. I won't name names, Jeff and Dina. But, you know, the rest of us had a past. Rest of us maybe walked outside the, 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 the things that God called us to do. He goes on to say that you were following the course and the fashion of the world under the sway of the tendency of this present age, flowing, I'm sorry, following the prince of power of the air. You were obedient to the con and under control of the demon spirit that still consistently works in the sons to disobedience. He goes on to say there, he says, the, the careless and rebellious and unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. We, we sort of lived there at, time, at one point in time in our lives, didn't we? 
We all did. You know, my mom got saved in this building. But there were years that she didn't walk with God. I'm not, I probably won't get to eat lunch someday now because of it. I, I am made up of every part of my life. I am made up of every part of my life, the good and the bad. But see, the thing is, is what God promised me at 10 years old, he laid his hand on my life and he put me in his, under his wings of favor. I mean, uh, Jerry Seville just preached a great message on favor. I, I bought his book because I want to get, I, I, as I'm listening to him talk, I'm thinking, I have been under God's favor since 10 years old. You don't go to war and don't hold a weapon. You don't go to war and come back with no scars, emotional or physical. It doesn't happen. Because of God's favor, I have none. Because of God's favor, I had to ask where my weapon was when they were shelling us. And the other guy said, don't worry about it. Just get your camera. You're going to be the greatest fireworks show you ever see. I had pictures, and then they got stolen. But, you know, the thing is, is that he, I walked against the things of God, though at 10 years old, he laid his hand on my life. At, at, at around that same time, I'm lying in bed crying. I wake up, and I wake up with a start, and my angel is standing over my, I saw my angel. I was scared, put the cover back over my head. A kid does. I mean, and I'm thinking, it was, he was gone. Thing is, is that from about 10 years old on, God had his hand on my life, his favor. And I didn't walk with him all my life, nor did, nor did a lot of you. But we've got to remember that, that he said he made, and he made you alive. Well, he just didn't make you alive or me alive. He's made everybody that has finally come under his banner alive from the past. Verse 4 says this, but, well, let me back up. Let's go back to verse 3. It says, Among these, we as well as once lived and conducted ourselves in, in the passions of our flesh. And I, I apologize. I'm starting to preach, and I really want to just have a conversation about this. I just want to talk. <clears throat> our behavior was governed by our corrupt, our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind. Our cravings dictated by our, our, by our senses and our dark in, in uh, imaging. We were by nature children of God's wrath and heirs to his indignation like the rest of mankind. See, the thing is, even though that's true in what it says there, God loved the world. That's what he says in the word. He so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that you and I might come alive. That you and I, that you and everybody else in your family, you and everybody else in your workplace, you and everybody else at the grocery store. He, he, he loved us so much that he gave his only son. I know Debbie thinks she's God's favorite, but Jerry Seville would argue with that. And, uh, and in verse 4 says, but God so rich... So rich he is in his mercy because of all the order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love that he loved us. Verse 4 is what's to say, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Thank you for God's mercy. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for the mercy that he applies to us every day. You know, there are a lot of people in, not in church today. Because they feel like they failed God and God won't forgive them. God, God doesn't want anything to do with them. And the thing is, is that I know that can be an excuse for some people, but, that's, but those that really believe that, that's a very sad statement of the church. That we haven't taught better. That you can fail and God will receive you back. That you can make a mistake this morning and by, by, the, by an hour later you can be redeemed of that mistake. We don't live under a curse. We live under his mercy. We live under, under his love. We live under his, his grace. We live under, under and, 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 and the thing is, is that when we teach that correctly, people, when they fail, when they fall, when they stumble. I got two little granddaughters, and they're the littlest. They're the last. But it's like they're, they're walking, they're learning to walk. You know how kids are when they learn to walk. They walk, they fall, they fall, they walk, they fall, they walk, they walk, they fall. And the thing is, is that 
you know, when, when we fall as a child, we get back up and we try it again. They're not discouraged. They might bump their head or something, so they cry a little bit or they get frustrated. But they're not discouraged. They get right back up and do it again. But we as people, as adults especially, we fall and stumble in the things of, of, of the world and, and all of a sudden we don't think we can get back in, in, the, in, in front of God. But God's mercy is over, over us all the time. His favor was made for you and I to live under and be a part of. As I said, I, 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 I realized, and, I, and God gave me a history lesson in my own life long before this weekend, and reminded, my, reminded me of the things in my past of where he had his hand on my life even when I wasn't serving him. Even when there was times I was running from him. Just like you. But God had his hand on your life. Those days are past, and now we can glean from them. In verse 5 it says, it's in when we were dead, uh, when we, even when we were dead or slain in our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. I want you to stop him for a moment and think of somebody you know. Think of somebody you know and you care about that doesn't walk with God today. Maybe they did. Think about them for a moment because see, that verse is for that he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Our responsibility as a people of God is to love. Our responsibility as the people of God is to reach out into the only way we become what we're scheduled to be in this with this ministry in this building is all of our vision. I'll get to that in a minute, but is all of us understanding there's a purpose for us to go out and draw people in. There's a purpose. You know, we we taught in uh, Pastor Sherry's church two weeks ago, and uh, I talked about when I when I when I'm up here preaching, I see people that. I don't see dead people, but I see people, okay? Um, I see people's faces sometimes that used to be with us. And as if Pastor Rick was here, he'd be able to tell you, there'd be, we, we, we would have to have two or three services of all the people that have gone through. If Dave Gibbs was here, all the people that he led to the Lord, you'd have to have a bigger building twice or three times the size to get those people in. Thing is, is that I see him as so one lady came up to us after service and she was so caught, caught by that verse, uh, by that thought of, of seeing people there that you want, that you're believing there, whether it be a family member or, or a next door neighbor or your boss or a coworker. And, and she, she said, next week when I come in, I'm bringing picture, pictures of my family and they're going right, right here in this pew. So that she says, and I'm going to leave them there until they start coming. And when they get here, they're going, what are these? You were always with me in this pew. You were always with me at this time. And we have to see this building full. I don't know whether you do or not. I do. But that doesn't keep us from moving and trying to get it full. I see the people, I see, I see them lining out the door, just like I saw in my vision in, in 1987. You know, in, in verse 7, of that same passage there of Ephesians, it says, and he did this that, you might clearly, that he, he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, his kindness and goodness toward uh, of the heart toward us in, in Christ Jesus. Through the ages to come. This verse was written thousands of years ago. But he's talking about today. God did what he did because he saw us coming. He saw our generation on earth, the last generation, hopefully, the last generation where these kids here won't have to go through the struggles we went through because they'll be with us in, in, in eternity. You know, in Psalm 23, verse 6, it says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't lived all the days of my life. Have you? And I ain't plan on checking out anytime soon. Tried that once, didn't like it, came back. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. It's like a shadow. That's what that concept is. Is it follows me. It's always there. 
It's always goodness and mercy are always there all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy always with me. If I choose to live that way. You know, uh, when I first got saved, the second time. The first time I got saved, I was 18. It was a parking lot at Steak and Shake. Next day I went out and bought a Bible. And then I just went on living my life. Well, I tried. I tried to. I went over and saw my aunt, because she's the only Christian I knew at the time. And uh, I said, I, got, I just want to tell you, I got saved last night. She goes, really? Well, don't get your girlfriend pregnant. <laughs> I thought, what the heck is that about? <laughs> it's like, and I didn't, so we're good, right? But then I went and I lived my life. And for a long time, I just, I just, I would, I, there was times when as I drew closer to receiving him back into my life and living for him fully, that I'd have conversations with God. Or we'd talk. We would talk, and I would talk, and then I look back and I go, that was some stupid things I said to him. But he still loved me. He still wanted me. He still cared for me. He still died for me. All the days of my life, his goodness and mercy has been there and will stay there. No matter what I've gone through, no matter what troubles I've, I've experienced, in verse, verse 9 of that same passage, it says this, For we were his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He, pre he prepared our lives before we knew it. Destiny. Your giftedness was, was, was something that happened when you were born, Rob. It was there in him. Her music... Her, their ministry as a couple, long before they met, was birthed in Christ. I know she wrote that letter. It blew out the window. She took off down to find it. And we've heard the funny story. We know Rob. Even, even, God even knew that Rob, Rob, Rob would walk the beach, the whole beach in his underwear. God knew that. God forgives you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. You mean or me or you? <laughs> the thing is, is that those events, those events were meant to testify of the beauty and the glory of God at work in a young couple. Well, young. young. <laughs> God had a plan for them before they knew each other. You know, uh, everything that goes on, said, before the foundation of time, God had the plan. In, in Isaiah 46, verse 9 through 11, says this, Remember the former things of old. And I know we're, every time I read a verse like that, I know that we're told we're not supposed to live in the past. I'm not talking about living in the past. But at nearly 69 years old, I have a whole lot more old than I have new. Not that, I, I mean, I've got a whole more, more new ahead of me. But I'm, I, I'm made up of the past. And I can't shake my past. I don't want to shake my past because I've learned so much from my past. Still today, even in ministry, I've learned from the past. God shows me things. And, and sometimes uh, when, when, when I see something in somebody, God says, remember when you were going through that. It's really easy. It's been really, I have to say, it's been easy for me to transition to where I wanted to be all my life. And that's a peaceable person, a person that... that, that, that it was, it was tough with my kids for a little because they brought the worst out in me. <laughs> Especially Rob, but we won't go to there. The thing is, is that I'm, I, I, I look at where I'm headed because that was, that was innate in me. It was something that was a part of me from day one. And the things that are of our past that are a part of us, they have made you up who you are today to minister to somebody. To remind you where you were once them. To remind you of what God has given you, even all the past, to share. He says, remember the four things of old. For I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's none like me. Remind yourself that even when you walked separate from him, how he was right there alongside of you. 
doing things that you didn't maybe take note of at the time. He goes on and says in verse 10, says, declaring from the end, from the beginning. Your beginning has a purpose. Your beginning, who you were, has a purpose. God placed his hand on you, you know, like I said, and I already got ahead of my notes on that. I, put, I wrote down notes this week. I already talked about being 10 years old. 10 years old was a, a specific time, and I didn't think about it for a long time. And God started taking me on a history journey of my own life. I want, and, and that's good. To remind yourself of where, where, where things are at and where you're going. He goes on to say this. From ancient times, there, uh, there's none yet done, there, that are not yet done. From, and from ancient times that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. He says, things that haven't even happened yet, that are destined to happen, and that's, and that's talking about us as a church. Things that haven't happened yet. You know, we have a music teacher in our body now. I can't wait. I get to start piano lessons next Friday, right? Is that what it is? And I'm excited. I, I can't wait to, to learn how to do some of that. We have, everybody's got a gift in the center. You know, you got your des, Dustin over here that can teach you if you don't know how, and I don't know how, and I don't want to know how. Just let you know. Don't come looking at me. <laughs> Cut down trees to, 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 to do lawn, lawn stuff. But he's a professional. But if you have a desire, Jeff, to learn that, instead of this lack of a job you have at Caterpillar, <laughs> doesn't matter. He's got a thing for you. I was... Uh, Jeff, uh, Jerry Seville was talking about when, um, before he got saved. And he said, back in that day, back in the 50s, the preachers didn't stay in hotels. They stayed with families, and the families fed them. And I've had that happen where when I was doing pulpit supplies, different churches, they'd invite you to dinner afterwards. And there was one in, in Indiana, whoops, there was one in Indiana, in a little country church, and uh, um, some, I guess they expected Debbie to be with me because the, the, the person that I had to go to lunch with was this woman. And she was 155 years old. But, but I'm sitting there, I was still I'm anxious by being, and I'm just real careful, you know. But so anyway, Jerry said, I, the information you didn't really need to know, I understand that. Um, but he was talking about how when people would come, and he said, my wife would always feed them. He said, it says, and he says, you know, they come over to eat my chicken, you know. And he said, and, and with that fat preacher, he said, I, w I think they should go get a real job so they have to work for a living instead of coming over and eating my chicken. He says, they go eat my chicken, all they got left is a gizzard, you know. <laughs> fat preachers. So anyway, he got saved under uh, Brother Copeland. But the thing is, is that, is that, I don't know why I told you that either, other than, you know, there's, there's a, we look backwards, and there's things that are coming our way that are, are we have to be ready for. You know, it says, and he goes on in the verse, he says, and I will do my pleasure. See, God's never stopped doing his pleasure in us. He's never stopped it, nor will he ever stop ministering to us and operate in, and giving pleasure uh, to us for what, what he's planned for us. It takes cooperating with one another. Acts, turn over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 46 and 47, it says this, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Verse 47, Praising God and having all favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily who were being saved. When Acts chapter 2 happened, it ignited the world in which they lived. It changed the area they lived in. You know, things have changed for us also, haven't they? You, know, you think about this. We, we've, you know, you've heard of the Big Bang, right? You've heard of that. But it was, uh, and, and there it was that loud in Acts chapter 2, the Big Bang that changed the world. You know, it was powerful, it was consuming, and like I said, it changed. Getting this property was powerful. It was consuming, it is consuming. It is, it is a, it is a, uh, always on our minds, you know. Uh, we're always we run over here, and actually, Pastor Jim put it, coined it. It says Grace Fellowship Groblin Church. You have to go. Uh, how do you put it? 
Uh, a, you go by there to get anywhere. That's the joke in Kentucky right now. And they'll say, well, I had, to get, I had to go to the meeting tonight. We had to go by a ticket. We were late because we had to go by Groveland first. And, and, and everybody in the ministry is excited about what God's done here. Why? Because this is just the blade. This is the blade. This is not the whole ear of corn. This is the blade. You know, everything changed for us. And it continues to change for us. You know, next week, Rob gets to preach again in uh, Knoxville. And uh, he gets to go up there and minister again. I knew they'd ask him back again. I knew that. We all knew that when he got to go the first time. And he's going up there and he, he delivers a word. Well, that, that's a blade for them. It's not the full year. He's just the blade. But they have to receive that. They have to look forward to the, to the future. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 11, 12 says this, With this in mind, we constantly pray that our God will empower you to live worthy of all that he has invited you to experience. That was Paul's prayer. He said, I just want you to live worthy of it. How do you do that? How do we live worthy of God's power, God's word? How do we do that? We do that by just not getting discouraged. By not getting into our flesh. By not getting challenged by, I mean, we're all different people, right? I mean, we're different, right? We have the same name. We're both Roberts. There's four of us in here, but we're all different. We spell it the same. Well, you spell it Rob. He spells Rob. He spells Rob. I, I spell it the right way, Bob. <laughs> the thing is, is that we, we're, di but we're different, Rob, Folk. You're Westbrook. True. <laughs> Just so she doesn't get confused. <laughs> Rob Martin, Rob Martin. If I want to do that, Rob Westbrook, Rob. Folk. We're, we're we're all the same for same, but we're different. And and we look different, we think different, and we don't always think alike. We don't always think the same things. Hank's motor in his head is always running on motors. Changing oil, changing tires, picking up cars. When he first started his business, he would he'd get discouraged because he wasn't doing anything down in the shop because he's always told him. Well, now he's got his own business. Now he gets to do it all. You know, uh, Rob, Rob, we Rob Folk, <laughs> I get you guys confused today. Rob Folk, he retired, sort of. But it just gave him more room to do the things that he likes to do and, and, and do something else. Do something else at, at, a, at another job. We're all different. We don't always think alike. But we're all believers. Some of us have been saved for a long, a long time. Some of us have been new. But it doesn't matter because we're all this, we all have the same journey. We're all on the same journey. What I guess what I'm trying to say is that even when Rob Westbrook and I don't agree, we just blame it on our wives. No. <laughs> when we don't agree, we still can't get confronted with one another. You know, um, because we're in a beginning, because this is the beginning of a great journey, sometimes we get frustrated. Think about the pioneers. Think just for a moment. Think about pioneers. They're coming across. Every time I travel, especially like through the mountains or in Kentucky, they never straightened out the roads from the wagon trails. Never did. Now, in Illinois, we got smart. We straightened them out. We don't have a lot of curves here. Wagons, you didn't should have gun that. You know, the thing is, is that, is that that journey to the pioneers, as they travel, think about the pioneers as they travel. They could get discouraged, but they kept moving forward to the goal at hand. We have to realize that in the beginning of this process, that we're going to get discouraged at times. Your vision and my vision may not be matched up totally, but we're linked. And as I got to thinking about that this morning, I was sitting on our balcony and I was thinking about how God linked people together. I thought about uh, John and Peter. They were sort of contentious at times when Jesus was alive. God brought them together. They brought them together so much that they helped, they healed the guy, gave a guy legs that hadn't had legs all his life. He had legs, but they didn't work. The thing is, is that he brought them together. Think about Paul and Timothy. Paul didn't like Timothy at first. But all of a sudden, he became his son. He became his son. I, I, I think about the pastor that I served. 
You know, I'd, I'd been a pastor, and I went and served as an associate. And the hardest time was realizing that him and I weren't necessarily exactly alike. He would say things, he would do things, and I'd go, man, that's just, that's just dumb. But I just stood there and I watched. I, my job was to hold up his arms. That was my calling at that church, was to be his armor bearer. And, and as, as I did those things, I learned. I learned a lot of things. You know, I've done a lot of things over the years in ministry times too. You know, and, and I know that you guys have done a lot. I went to that church and went from being a senior pastor to an associate. But all of a sudden, a suddenly happened, and God moved me into a senior associate position. Now, that didn't make any, that wasn't any different. I didn't look any different than any of the other pastors. I still sat on the stage right with them. I still did things like they did. But my, what I did was, it was in charge of the ministry on a day-to-day -day basis. I was full-time. I was the only full-time one there. You know, and God doesn't let go of it. He had already given me the vision in 1987. This is following that. He doesn't let go. I said, well, I said, well, how do I accomplish my vision? How do I get my vision that you gave me done here? You know what his answer was? Stay true to the vision. Don't let it go. But do it here. And so things that we did there were, were, were tempered by the vision that God gave me. When I said all that to say this, we all have a vision in this place where we think this building, this property should look like and what it should be like. We all have one on how we think it should look. Now, my personal opinion, I think that wall needs to be painted. Now, I got to run it by person Debbie put in charge of the decorating. <laughs> you like the white? <laughs> oh, to run a bike. Oh, you don't trust my, I want chartreuse. Oh, God. What could go wrong? <laughs> I don't want chartreuse. Did you hear from that? No, not on that color. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we have, and, and every one of you are leaders here. What does that mean here? If we're all leaders, how do we follow? A good leader follows. You know, a good leader follows. Pastor Jim is the leader of our ministry, but he still follows others. He follows those that are over him. The thing is, is good leaders follow, so we have to do. Just tell him I'm almost done here. He also told me not to rush it. Not to rush the vision. Not to rush what he had given me, and all of a sudden... And suddenly it starts to happen. So those of you who have visions of what you think you should be doing in the ministry, don't rush it. Just take a hold of it and don't let it go. And God will bring it to pass. He brought us here for a purpose, the word said. God how has us where he wants us. With all the time in the world to shower grace and mercy upon everything we do. The last passage I want to share, and, and, I, and I wanted to be more um, conversational, and I guess I, pro I preached and said. Psalm 23 says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, I think about, and, I, and, I, and, I, and as a pastor, when Pastor Nancy was here at our other building, and she laid hands on all of you and spoke her over, I think all of you, I sat back and I listened. I stood back and I listened. And I know the people of this congregation so well, I thought she didn't miss a mark. That's who spoke to you, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. She didn't miss a mark. And the thing is, is that as the pastor, I know your gifts. God shows me your gifts. And, and every one of us here have a, a place to see things change in this place. To see us all grow. See, Gail's message today grew me. Grew you. Pastor, Pastor Vicky's and John's messages grow the people here also. Pastor Joe, Pastor Rob, whoever preaches, Jeff and Sarah, you know, whoever. When we get into the Creator Con, that's going to change. If we come in receptive to the receiving of the word that's going to be taught, it will change us. 
But if we come in thinking, well, what am I, gonna, what am I getting out of this? You know, there's a lot of times I've heard messages and I thought, well, what did I get out of it? And I listened to it again, oh, that's what I heard. I, I didn't necessarily hear that the first time through. I listened to sermons over and over and over. Why? Because I want to hear what God has to say to me. You know, um, Pastor Joe and Pastor Vicki uh, both knocked it out of the park in Kentucky. Pastor Mike knocked it out of the park in Kentucky. And the and, uh, thing is, is that every sermon in Kentucky was great. So I'm not, I'm not saying they were, they were the best. I'm just saying Illinois was the best. But, you know, it was a great service. It was a great week. Everyone was, came out of there as pastors came out of there nourished. Everyone has came out of there with a desire, with a, with a new vision of what God has for us in our prospective churches. I see this church, beloved, exploding in central Illinois. And it's not because I'm the pastor. It's because we're the people. We're the people of God gathered together for a time and a place. We're the people of God gathered together for a time and a place in a place that can be explosive. Think of where we're at. Just, just step out when you go out your car and just survey the horizon again. We've got nothing but potential for growth here. And it's not because I'm the past. Not, and, 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 and that doesn't have to be said, but I just, that's how I feel. If I'm gone tomorrow, I'm not going anywhere, but if I'm gone tomorrow, I am going to Missouri, but I'm not, you know what I'm saying. If something happened, something happened, God's got a, gotten stuff in store for the people of, this, of, of, the, of God here. But we've got to work together for it. We can't lose the excitement. We can't lose the vision. And we have to meld our visions together. When you come to me in and you say, I've got this idea, I love it. Because it's feeding right into the overall vision. And, it, and, and it's, it's like a puzzle. You know, you got the puzzle. You see on the box the picture, right? And then you open up the box, it's a bunch of little pieces. But every piece has a purpose. And every piece makes the picture whole. Your piece, no matter the size, if it's a five-piece puzzle, your great big chunk makes the picture whole. If it's a 2,000-piece puzzle, they make 2,000-piece puzzles? They have to be crazy to try to put those together. No matter how small that puzzle piece is, it makes the puzzle whole, makes the picture whole. Deb and I are able to be gone at times, like we were the last two weeks, because of the... the of the anointing on the you, the people. We don't like being gone, but we're able to be gone. But from this point on, let's be excited. It's supposed to be a pep talk today. I think I've not done that well. Maybe I need to listen to it again, huh, Mary? <laughs> Thank you. And I'll try really practice hard on piano. Um, go from this place. Whether you come back and go to second service or not, whether, you, or whether this is the only one you go to this week, Thursday nights, whenever you're here on Thursday nights, the thing is, just go away from this place every time with your vision intact and growing and see what God does. He will move in you in a mighty way, even though you think it's not possible. Amen? So I don't know where we go from. We've never had a service all jumbled up like this before. I enjoyed the communion where it was. I had a guy, I was thinking about that, I had a guy in the old church that we birthed out of that would have loved it because it was at the beginning of service or sort of the beginning and not at the end. That's how the church split and, never mind. I love you guys. Have a